A shooting on June 28th in the newsroom of the Capital Gazette newspaper in Annapolis, Maryland, left five people dead. This is What's Trending, I'm Martine Bierman. There will be plenty of analysis about the shooter, his motive, and mental state, but in this video, we'd like to focus on the victims of this tragic act of violence. Gerald Fishman edited the editorial page of the Capital Gazette and had worked there since 1992. According to the paper, he was the conscience and voice of the Annapolis News Organization, writing scathing, insightful, and always exacting editorials about the community. Coworkers say he had a quiet demeanor that hit a wry and biting sense of humor. Tom Marcourt, the Gazette's former executive editor, said that Fishman could have gone to a major metropolitan newspaper, but he was content staying at the Capital Gazette. Fishman had written editorials about mass shootings, as nearly every newspaper in America has in recent years. He wrote compassionate words after tragedies in Orlando, Las Vegas, Parkland, Florida, and others, and challenged the opposition to gun reforms. A few days after the massacre at Parkland, he wrote, "...simply weaving these atrocities into our national fabric, shrugging and rationalizing that most likely next time it won't be our church, school, or kids, will do worse damage to the nation than even the loss of life." Do we really want to be that sort of country? Fishman married late in life, telling his colleagues in a deadpan voice that he'd typed Mongolian opera singer into a dating website. Gerald Fishman was 61 years old. Assistant editor and features columnist Rob Hyacin had worked at the Capital Gazette since 2010. His brother, novelist Carl Hyacin, described him as a passionate journalist and writer who dedicated himself to the newspaper. Times were tough, but I, most of all, I think what he would want me to talk about is, is journalism and the importance of community journalism. He was killed while he was doing what he loved to do, which is to put out this newspaper for the people of Annapolis. He'd... He had recently celebrated his 33rd wedding anniversary with his wife, Maria, who turned 58 on the day of the shooting. The couple have three children. He was described as a goofy storyteller who would get very serious when it came to investigative journalism. A former Capital Gazette reporter, Tina Reid, described Hyacin as a mentor. She said, He was a philosopher and a poet. He was a coach and he was a mentor. He wanted to teach young journalists to be better. Rob Hyacin was 59 years old. 56-year-old John McNamara held a variety of positions, including sports editor and reporter, his dream job. He had published two books on sports at the University of Maryland. University of Maryland Football Vault, and Cole Classics, Maryland Basketball's Leading Men and Moments. His former boss, Jerry Jackson, praised his flexibility, saying he could write, he could edit, he could design pages, he was just a jack of all trades and a fantastic person. In a recent Facebook post, he had encouraged people to go see documentaries about Ruth Bader Ginsburg and Fred Rogers, writing, both are marvelous and moving. And in these troubled times, when the forces of darkness seem to have gained the upper hand, it's nice to be reminded that there's still justice and kindness in the world. You can thank me later. McNamara leaves his wife, Andrea Shambly, who he'd met at the University of Maryland. Rebecca Smith was a sales assistant who had only worked at the Gazette since November 2017. As a survivor of endometriosis, a uterine disorder, she worked to raise awareness of the disease. On his Facebook page, Smith's fiance, DJ, wrote, This can't be real. I will always love you, no matter what. As you used to tell me, you are my human. No one ever put up with or attempted to make me a better person like you did. I will love you forever, to the moon and back. I love you more. Till we meet again, beautiful. Till we meet again. According to a GoFundMe page set up for her family, Smith acted as a bonus mom and best friend to DJ's daughter, Riley. She enjoyed attending DJ's softball games, and a charity game has been scheduled in her honor. Rebecca Smith was 34 years old. Wendy Winters worked in fashion and public relations in New York City before moving to Maryland in the 1990s, when she began freelancing for the Capital Gazette. Her articles became so popular and her byline so frequent that eventually the paper hired her on full-time. One of her daughters told the newspaper, "'My mother was a wonderful woman and a fantastic reporter. Her life was a gift to everyone who knew her and the world will not be the same without her. We are grieving and trying to make sure all of us can be together to celebrate the life of our mother.'" The 65-year-old mother of four was such a prolific writer she even became well-known for her detailed Christmas letters, which contained a big treat and a month-by-month -month breakdown of the previous year. Wendy Winters was a passionate and copious writer who would often publish over 250 stories a year in the Capital Gazette. Our hearts and thoughts go out to all the victims' families during this incredibly tragic time. A journalist for Bloomberg government, Maddie Alexander, started a GoFundMe page to help pay for the victims' funeral expenses, newsroom repairs, and other unforeseen expenses. As of this recording, they've already raised over $140,000.
and our hope is that it's gonna be so much higher by the time this video comes out. To assure transparency and accountability, GoFundMe and the Capital Gazette staff must both approve any withdrawal of funds. You can donate to the fundraiser at gofundme.com forward slash Capital Gazette. Rest in peace to these five loved and very valued employees of the Capital Gazette.